It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. We've got Mr. David Sterling is with us. David, thanks for coming on, sir. Thanks for having me. It's a joy to be here. Yes, sir. So, uh, David, um, I guess the last time we spoke, you were, uh, I believe, a candidate for uh, attorney general uh, at one at one time, and now you are running as a, for the Arkansas Supreme Court. So congratulations on throwing your hat in the ring. Well, thanks so much. I do appreciate it. Um, you know, it, it has been a, a – I guess it was four years ago when I was on this program, uh, when I was running for attorney general and uh, got into, um, uh, uh, I guess it was uh, on the Republican ticket back then and everything. This is a nonpartisan race here, so no party affiliation here. But, you know, Leslie and I uh, got into a, um, uh, and had Patricia Nation in there as well, and uh, no one got a majority in the uh, the election, so we had to do a statewide runoff where everybody had to go back to the polls all across the state three weeks later. And and select between us and uh afterwards you know i endorsed leslie and uh, wrote her a check and um uh and then later on she went ahead and and beat nate Steele in that uh race and uh and now she's been doing a great job as our attorney general um so you mentioned david about the nonpartisan uh, relationship with our with our judges um and our in our elections and that makes doing that i you know that makes doing interviews with you guys extremely difficult. Uh, I will just say, um, and that's just that that's makes my job harder. So you know whatever that's a first world problem. But I would just say so. So how do we how do we know? You know, I mean, you're how do we know your judicial philosophy? Let's just let's talk about this. What do you think about the 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 Constitution? Uh, are you? Would you describe yourself as an originalist, or would you describe yourself as somebody who, uh, you know, thinks that the Constitution is maybe a living, breathing document that changes over time? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts are just that. I mean, I, I do believe uh, in originalism. I believe in textualism. Uh, you know, I'm someone that really takes the Constitution very seriously and understands the separation of powers and the checks and balances that are in the Constitution, but. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm an originalist in, in, in the same way. I mean, I've read a lot of, of uh, Scalia's works on this. Uh, uh, there's a number of uh, uh, Supreme Court justices, uh, such as Neil Gorsuch and uh, uh, Samuel Alito, who have talked about Clarence Thomas, that have talked about uh, originalism and, and textualism, and they try to adhere to that. And, and that's what I'm offering to the Supreme Court. Hmm. Um, so what, what makes you want to, I mean, what makes you want to be a Supreme Court justice in terms of, um, you know, what made you want to run for this particular seat? Uh, because this is, uh, isn't it, it's, it's, it's the current justice, uh, you're running against, uh, Courtney Goodson, right? You're running for her seat, correct? Correct. That's right. So, well, you know, I'm running. Uh, for the Supreme Court because I think that Arkansans deserve a justice who will serve with integrity and who have the who has the right judicial philosophy. You know, I want to use my experience and knowledge to serve the state uh, where I grew up. And I've been, uh, you know, I'm a lifelong Arkansan practicing law here for over 20 years in both uh, private and public capacities. And uh, uh, I've also served as a special justice on the Supreme Court a couple of times. And uh, you know, my, my wife and I have been married for 26 years. Uh, uh, my wife, Deanie, uh, we have a wonderful daughter, Elizabeth Ann. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I bring the right values to the, to the Supreme Court, the right experience, the right values and, and integrity. I think those are, are really key. Hmm. Um, can I ask you a judicial question on the uh, and and I don't know if you can answer this again. This is why it's really kind of sometimes it's hard to interview. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to interview judicial candidates because they don't want to. Sometimes you guys can't comment because you may be ruling on the case at a later date or something. And then of course the nonpartisan thing, uh, you know, makes it makes it kind of uh, hard. Again, you, you did run as a Republican uh, the last time, so that gives us some some uh, you know. Uh, reasonable uh, way to, to to interpret i think how you would govern and, and being an original originalist certainly is good uh there is one thing about this upcoming tort reform amendment that the people are going to be voting on and one of the reasons i don't support it even though i might support tort reform is because you mentioned separation of powers i think it blurs the lines because it's going to give the legislature the ability to set rules of evidence in a courtroom what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that needs to happen, or is that is that a blurring of the separation of powers, in your opinion? Well, 
you got me in a tough one there. You know, that's going to be one that's tough to answer. I will say this, um, the people of Arkansas, you know, if they, if they vote for this, uh, they will be amending the Arkansas constitution. And, um, uh, uh, if they amend the Arkansas Constitution, uh, you can count on me to uh, to enforce the words of the Constitution because I think that that reigns supreme. I don't have a position uh, publicly on uh, how I feel about that particular amendment uh, because, like you said, I mean, uh, at some point it, that will come before the court, and I don't I don't want to. Uh, have to recuse from that case because I've prejudged it. And, that, and, that, and that's the thing here. You, you want a judge on the uh, Supreme Court that understands the independence of the judiciary and doesn't prejudge uh, cases um, that come before it. You want someone that's going to be independent and judges the cases based on the uh, facts and circumstances of each case and applying the law fairly and impartially to those facts and circumstances. Mm. And that's what I bring as well. Well, and I think that's, uh, that's totally understandable. You're right. And I, I knew that that question might be, you know, difficult to answer because of a future court case specifically on the separation of powers, because I think if it passes and I think, you know, that's, we don't know that yet, but I think if, if it passes, it's, it's inevitable that that portion is going to, is going to wind up, uh, you know, before you guys at some point, um, so let, let's just, so how is the campaign going so far? Like how, how have you been received? Where are you going? You know, what, what groups are you trying to talk to? Because, you know, there's a lot of other races going on and sometimes people forget, Hey, you know, we get to elect our Supreme court judges. That's a good thing. Well, it's been, uh, the campaign's going great. Uh, I guess I've really enjoyed it more than anything else, just getting back out and, uh, I guess reuniting with a lot of old friends and stuff. You know, that last campaign that I had uh, lasted 18 months. You know, I got in that race in uh, January 2013, and uh, we ended up doing a, uh, I guess the runoff finished up, I think, June, June 10th of uh, 2014. So 18 months out on the campaign trail, uh, meeting people and, and establishing relationships uh, with people that I know and respect and have become. Uh, really good friends with over the years, and we've kept up with each other uh, during that uh, during the interim. But when I got in this race and I started uh, visiting some of these folks again, uh, it's it's been a little bit of a homecoming all over the state. I mean, it's, it's, it's it, again, it's a statewide race. It's you know, I'm campaigning from Pigott down to Texarkana, and from Bella Vista down to Lake Village. I mean, it's it's a big state, uh, and it's just been kind of an abbreviated one too. I mean, it's uh, I made my announcement on February first. And uh, the election is, uh, you know, three and a half months later, you know, so um, it's been kind of nice having that uh, those underpinnings of the uh, last race and everything to reunite me with these folks. But I, I tell you, I'm way back from uh, uh, one of my first uh, events in this. I called my wife to kind of tell her how it went and everything. And I told her, I said, you know what, if I get elected to this, it's going to be an eight year term. And it's. You know, when, when you get out here and you start talking to people and everything, you realize that it's real easy with an eight-year term to get disconnected uh, from everyday people. Uh, I, I said, if I get elected to this, and even if I don't get elected to this, we really need to uh, invest uh, our time and our resources into continuing to stay connected to uh, the people all over the state. You know, it's, it's hard sometimes to, to go back to your hometown and the settle into your law practice or settle into your job and everything and and uh, lose touch, you know, as far as that goes, as far as if, you, if, you don't, if you're not intentional about it. And I've been very intentional about trying to maintain those contacts over the last four years, and uh, I don't want to get elected to this office and go eight year or seven years before I'm running for re-election again and all of a sudden look up and say, oh, i got to get back out there. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think that you have to be very intentional to stay grounded with the people that are out there and the voters of Arkansas, and that's what I intend to do. Yeah, mo most definitely. And, you know, it is such a powerful position being on the Arkansas Supreme Court. You know, you guys are kind of the last stop or are the last stop when it comes to Arkansas. And, I, you know, there was some talk, I guess, a um, couple of years ago, maybe, maybe I guess in 2016, there was talk about, you know, maybe going away from the direct vote of the people and moving toward an appointment process. And I was, I'm wondering, what do you favor? Do you, do you like the system the way it is having to get the approval of the people to become a judge or would you, do you think it would work better 
with some sort of appointment process where political officials decide who the who the next Supreme Court judge judge is going to be. Honestly, I'm completely comfortable with the existing uh, system of elect, uh, elected judges. Uh, I mean, there's pros and cons no matter which way you go. I mean, you want independence in your judiciary, uh, but at the same time you want uh, there's to be some accountability. And I think that elections really give you the most accountability uh, in all your public officials, including judges. And so, uh, you know, what, what we have here is kind of a blend here in Arkansas where you have some really long terms, you know, where uh, appellate judges are elected for eight-year terms. It's not quite a life term like it is on the federal level. But, you know, eventually the uh, justices have to uh, uh, face the voters and, um, and answer to them and see if the voters have decided to go in a different direction. And that's what we're facing here in this particular race. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. We've been talking with David Sterling. He's candidate for Arkansas Supreme Court. I'd love to talk to you again soon, David, and uh, best of luck to you, sir. Uh, and I, I appreciate you running. It's good anytime somebody throws their hat in the ring. That's a good thing. Well, thanks, Paul. I just want to let your listeners know that the election is actually May 22nd, you know, for judges. That's actually our uh, general election. Everybody else, it's their primary uh, election. A lot of people skip the primary and go straight to the uh, November election. But if you do that, you're going to miss out on the opportunity to vote for your judges and prosecutors and other nonpartisan positions. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my faith informs me in all my decisions, and I promise to serve the people of Arkansas with honor and integrity if elected, and I'm asking for your listeners' vote on May 22nd. All right. David Sterling, candidate for Arkansas Supreme Court. We appreciate it, sir. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it, too. All right. Folks, uh, good morning to you. Uh, feel free to send us a text.